Welcome to our live training session number 41. We're going to be learning how to tune a Mitsubishi Evolution 8 using ECU Flash open source tuning software. Let's jump into some details about this vehicle. We're going to find it has a bone stock 4G63 bottom end. On the top end, it has GSC S1 cams and upgraded head studs. It has a stock intake manifold and a stock throttle body, so the engine is relatively stock. On the turbo side of things, we have an equal length turbo manifold, a Force Performance HTA73 green turbo, 3 inch turbo back exhaust, an ETS front mount, and ETS charge pipes. On the fuel system side of things, we have a FIC 1000cc injectors, Walbro 255 liter per hour fuel pump. We also have, in addition to this, a three port boost solenoid, and we also have an Omni four bar plug and play map sensor. So now that we covered all the details of the vehicle, let's jump into our live training session. We can get started creating our base calibration file. Welcome to our live training session here with our Mitsubishi Evo 8. Now we just went over all the details of the vehicle. Let's jump into our ECU flash software so we can begin creating our base calibration file and get our tuning process started. So moving in here to your ECU flash, open up the top here I have under my open ROM documents. I have our math based 9417 file that's gonna be an Evo 8 based file, which this is an Evo 8. So we're gonna be doing our tuning process here or beginning our tuning process with our math specific file that we have covered from our training course. This vehicle is a bit unique where it has both a mass airflow sensor and it also has an upgraded uh, map sensor. So we're able to actually accomplish both math based tune and a speed density based tune. So I'm gonna be essentially doing two tutorials in one here. So we're gonna be probably having a whole bunch of videos looking at the calibration process, again, for a math based tune and for a speed density based tune. So it should be very clear how to go and accomplish either on your Evo 8, as long as you have your upgraded map sensor. So this actually has a, the Omni 4 bar map sensor. And again, that's why we can accomplish having either of these calibration methods used. So this first method we're gonna be covering here is we're gonna be starting off with our math based file. So we're gonna do mass airflow based, then move into speed density map based. So let's go in here and just go down our current round metadata. We're gonna go in each field here and work away from the top all the way to our bottom in our tables here in configuration and setup details. And we're essentially gonna be creating our base map in this video. Next video, we'll get it fired up and get it running and go through that process of starting to calibrate our fuel tables and our spark timing tables. And then we'll continue on as we go through the rest of the videos, doing our boost control and everything else that goes along with that. So this video is gonna be especially important. You can follow along. It'll tie together a lot of things we learned in the training course um, as far as going in and entering the proper data into all of your tables here to have a solid starting point for doing your editing. Now, before I jump in here as well, I wanna mention, I'm gonna be trying to alter and uh, change things the least amount as possible. And that's going to essentially simplify my base map creation process. A lot of times when we go to create a base map, there's gonna be hundreds of tables in here we can change. And usually the base files here are gonna be 80 to 90% already kind of on the way for a good base map to start with. Obviously we have to put things like our map sensor details, our injector details, and if zeroing out our boost control to kind of get started, get things going. Um, but we'll find the core tables in here, the idle control tables, um, a lot of the spark timing and the mass airflow in this case, or even the speed density tables. will give you a solid starting point to begin. So the least, again, the least amount we change here, the better. So we're just gonna go through the most important parameters and tables here to edit and update so that we have things done accurately. So let's go here to our injector data here. Let's jump into our first section in our ROM metadata. We need to enter in the injectors that we're using. So in this case, they're FIC 1000cc high impedance injectors. Now this does have the factory resistor box has been removed. It has a resistor bypass delete that's gonna be found on the firewall. Um, so that's been taken care of already. So if we're plugging in our injector data here, we always wanna make sure if we have high impedance injectors installed that that resistor box has been removed or all of the injector data that you're putting in is gonna be completely skewed and it's gonna be off. And you'll find if you're doing your math compensation tuning or any of your injector scaling, you might find things are way out. You might find that your static flow right here is gonna be way off or your latency data especially is gonna be way, way off because you're restricting the amount of resistance between the ECU controlling the injector and the actual injector. So those have to, the resistor box has to come out. Make sure you do that. Um, again, if you have high impedance injectors, if you have low impedance injectors, then you definitely need to keep it in place. Don't remove it or it will be able to damage the ECU. So we have that kind of cause and effect. And if you're unsure what kind of injectors that you have, you can use a multimeter testing the ohm resistance across both terminals on the injectors. You have to unplug the injector clip, take your multimeter, put it between the two terminals. You should see on a low impedance injector anywhere between two to six ohms that requires having a resistor box in line. 
if the injector is over 8 ohms and it meters out over 8 ohms, so 8 to about 16 ohms, that's a high impedance injector. So the resistor box has to come out. All right, so let's go in here and deal with our injector data first. So the first thing I'm going to go move in here to the minimum injector pulse with here. We see one, two, and three. Well, Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.